Good morning, guys. This is Breaking Through Addiction. This is Dr. Rob Kelly, the addiction doctor. Great to be with you this morning. Another sunny day in San Antonio. As you can tell, I'm from Manchester, United Kingdom. But I believe they're having the heat wave too. As usual, my co host, beautiful Jennifer Lovely. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you today? Good morning. How are you? Doing good today. Doing absolutely amazing. How about you? I'm good. I actually drove 14 hours yesterday. So I'm a little bit tired and a little bit um, like trying to get my sea legs under me again. I came back to really gather all of my stuff and make my final destination back to Arizona. So I'm a little, I'm a little tired and um, yeah, a little overwhelmed, just to be honest, but I'm good. Thank you for being here. You know that we're, we're going to make it amazing today. And when you finish today, it's going to be like, oh my God, I'm so glad. I contacted you with my BFF, Dr. Rob, because I feel so much better now. The, so where, they, where are you now? What, sorry, I'm in Washington. I'm on the oh, island. Washington, no. yeah. And when, when are you going back? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm giving myself till September. Oh, okay, good, good. I, good. I can actually last that long. Um, but I wanted to, the fun thing about having you as my BFF is that I've got a, doctor that I can just pick up the phone and call anytime I need a, a just a little pick me up. So that's a blessing. Always. Always. How many times have we done that between each other? A lot. It's crazy. <clears throat> and yeah. it's usually when to be honest guys, it's usually when I need help. It's just <laughs> like my bro. Nobody knows this behind the scenes where it's just like, you know, oh, I'm not feeling like this. I'm feeling like that. And she's just like, okay, first of all, breathe. Yeah, it's awesome. It's but, awesome to have friends around you like that. But the best part is, is that I can psychically feel, psychically feel when something is off with you. It's so funny. That always freaks me out. Guys, I want to tell you, if you're listening and watching, <coughs> excuse me, I sat at home a couple of weeks ago, and for whatever reason, there's an argument with somebody. And every time we have an argument, somebody else feels bad after. Even though they're in the always, just joking, always. But uh, after I finished and sat there, and I was suddenly get a ding on my phone. And I look and she's saying, is everything okay? And I'm like, oh, she's weird. She's totally weird. She, every time I don't feel good, she's bing, on the phone straight away, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yes. Okay, so today we have Tracy Lee. <clears throat> this is going to be a good one, guys. Tracy Lee's going to come on and share her, her stuff with her experience. Strength. She's got some great points as well. Um, she's, um, she's over in Austin. So we're not too – in fact, I was going to go to her house this morning and, and do live from there, but uh, decided to commute up 22 stairs – to, to my office is much, much better. So guys, <laughs> stay tuned in two seconds. We're gonna come back with Jenny Philly. See you shortly, guys. Welcome back, guys. This is Breaking Through Addiction. This is Jennifer Lee, and I'm with my lovely co-host, Jennifer he's, Lovely. Good just, morning, guys. He's much just into one person. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll body swap with you. Let's do that. How are we doing this morning? We're good. How are you? I'm amazing. T Tracy, welcome to the show. How are you? Good Thank to you. be I'm, here. I'm honored. I'm grateful. I'm excited. Um, good stuff. Well, it only goes out to about one or two people, so we should be okay. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get to exactly who it needs to get to this morning. I, I, I feel uh, very secure in knowing that whoever needs exactly. to hear exactly what they're going to hear is going to exactly. be if, here if, at the if, perfect if place one time. person today, just one person, yep. then we'll be good. So, Tracy, tell our viewers something about you, what you do, and uh, excite them. I can't wait to hear from you. With, uh, with sure. Actual. For sure. So um, thank you, Jennifer, for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Rob, for having me. My name is Tracy Lee. I'm a self-love master coach. How did I come to be that? Uh, well, that is a windy, twisty, long road of uh, this is exactly what I'm meant to do with my life. And um, it's the most rewarding thing ever. I literally, literally teach people how to authentically love themselves in a healthy way so that we can go about the business of loving one another in a healthy way, not in a codependent way, not in a, um, I, I, I'm going to die if I don't have you enmeshed way, but in a healthy way where we get to love each other from the overflow instead of from the desperation. 
Um, I love that, Tracy. And you know, one of the things that um, I used to hear all the time, especially in my 20s, early 30s, when I was really um, kind of a hot mess, um, they would say, um, you just need to love yourself. You just need to love yourself. And that would literally make me crazy. Yeah. So can you talk to us about what really deep self-love really means from your perspective? Sure. So I'm going to go a little back, right? Sure. So the, the way I got to be this is because I, I most needed it. I really think that teachers teach what they most need to know. And for sure, that was the truth for me. Um, when we talk about love, generally speaking, we think we're talking about a lemon. So if I say to you guys, picture a lemon in your head, I can be pretty certain that we're all picturing a lemon in our head. You know, Dr. Rob's may be a whole lemon and Jennifer's may be lemon slices and mine might be lemon wedges, but we all have a lemon in our head. When we talk about love, it's a far more esoteric thing. And we still talk about it like we know what we're talking about. And so one of the very first things I have goosebumps, one of the very first things that I needed to do in my adult life, probably in my 30s, was understand what it is for me to feel loved. What is that? Because it's going to be different for me than it's going to be for each of y'all. And that doesn't make it right or wrong. And it for sure can we cuss on here? It's yeah. for sure. Yeah, sure you Thank you. For sure is shit not going to be necessarily completely the love we got from our family of origin. Some of it we may want to keep, but some of it I for sure want to toss out the window, right? So it's about really waking up to an exploration of self and it's sort of like if you have this big toolbox marked love on it, you want to check out some of the old rusty tools that don't work anymore and probably never really worked anyway. And again, we're not going to condemn mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or whomever. Those are the tools they got. But we can go into the toolbox and go, this doesn't work anymore. And I need something self-soothing. I need, I mean, some of it is so incredibly practical. I literally talk to my clients about um, the pearls in my toolbox. So do you have a self-soothing list? Oh, healthy ways to self-soothe. That's the first thing I have people do because guess what we do if we don't have a written down healthy in case of emergency break glass self-soothing list, mm -hmm. we go to the unhealthy shit, right? We go every to time. every time. And that's our knee-jerk reaction until every time becomes the new way, the healthier way. I need a cheat sheet. And I need to know where the cheat sheet is. <laughs> so when I get in a pickle, I make it easy for myself. So some of it is super practical like that. And some of it is really hard exploration of really pulling up the beliefs we have implanted in us and going, do, do I even want to keep this? Does it even jive with me or not? And for me, it's a it's a lifelong deal forever. I'll be honing and tweaking how much and how well I love myself, which lets me love other people really easily. But it's like mm -hmm. a it's like a well tuned a well tuned car. You know, we tune it up to to race, but it's going to be tuned up every week or every month. Otherwise, it's not going to race too well. I know that in the early days, with, with especially with people we work with, addiction is in the family. So we're born with the addicted brain. Now, during that childhood, <clears throat> the mapping of the brain is is obviously off because of what we hear and what we what we see as a child. And the addicted brain will grab hold of that. Now, I would say 99.9% .9 of people I work with do not know how to love themselves. I didn't. They thought, we all say, oh, love you, love you. To really know what that means, because I didn't. And I was coming up against all sorts of problems in my life because I didn't know how to love me. So I didn't have girlfriends. I took hostages, <laughs> you know, and the same thing with, with guys or friends or whatever. You know, I, they, I didn't know what to do. So if, if you've got me coming to you 30 years ago, where do you start with that stuff? I start with whatever is up for you, really and truly what I tell people. Like people used to come to me and go, are you a, are you a business coach? Mm -hmm. 
Are you a relationship coach? Mm -hmm. Like wherever your pain is in the moment is the classroom you're in. I don't, I mean, we just start where you are and the, the tools are the same pretty universally for whatever it is. And, and sometimes we discover if you come to me for business coaching, that it's not your business at all. It's your primary relationship. And, you know, I love what you said. I, the, the truth of the matter is what I want, I want to be loved well. And you can't love me well, Dr. Rob, if I don't know what that is. And we teach people how to love us. So really and truly, the, my tagline is I love myself and so, right? And the loving choice for me is the loving choice for everyone, even if it's not popular. So then we have to go to work on um, knowing that disappointing other people doesn't mean they're going to die somewhere. All 10 commandments became thou shalt not ever disappoint anybody ever. And I don't know when that happened, but it's wrong and it's creating a world mess. So where I start with whomever is where they are feeling the most pain. I'd love to tell you that pain is not the number one motivator for change in this world. I, I do believe we can choose I choose ease, I choose happiness, I choose joy, but still the majority of people need to be in a colossal amount of pain before they're really gonna do some work. <clears throat> I have often, often, you know, talked to, um, well, my some of my clients and even my children. I remember telling my son, honey, it sounds like you need to suffer more. It's just, <laughs> right? Like, I'm sorry, but it seems like you need to suffer some more. Dr. Rob and I had this conversation the other day about, about somebody, you know, it's like sometimes there's just more suffering. But what I want to do is kind of go back. You and I had a conversation um, a while back, and we talked about when you got the Courage to Change book. Oh, and okay. Yeah, sure. That story so much. Yeah. So we so yeah, for sure. I, I can tell you, so my oldest son is 28 and he was an, an itty bitty infant. So let's call it 28 years ago. My, his father, my children's father is an alcoholic, still a practicing alcoholic. And um, I must have been bemoaning my situation um, uh, in dramatic fashion, no doubt, to my sister and her best friend. And my sister's best friend took me to an Al-Anon meeting. I can tell you everything about that meeting. I remember where we sat. It was like in a little classroom. We sat in little chairs. It was very weird. The topic was let go and let God. I applied it to my life. She gave me a copy of The Courage to Change that I never opened. I It never occurred to me, not for a while, to go back to another meeting. And I sold The Courage to Change, hand God, in a garage sale. Later, bought my own copy. But this gift that was gifted to me, I That's sold it in a garage sale. By the way, in our, in our uh, community here, you're selling. <laughs> I did. Someone, I make up that someone really needed it and bought it. And, you know, they were ready and I wasn't ready. And it took me uh, five years, five more years of really suffering to walk into the rooms of Al-Anon um, in 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 the summer of 1997 Gavin was six months old and he is my youngest and he's now 23 so 22 years ago and I I did I walked in there and went um, I will do anything you people tell me to do just make sure you tell me how to get him to quit drinking and um, they didn't want to talk about that they wanted to talk about what I what do you, what do you like, sweetheart? And I would say, well, I like it when he, and they'd go, no, no, honey, what do you like? And I'd say, well, if he would, and no, it took him a long time to crowbar the he out of my what do I like, because I didn't know. And um, I was so ready at that point that that whole push pennies across the highway naked, you all have heard that one, have you ever heard that one? Yeah, I would have done I've that. that I would have done that for sure. I would have been like, awesome, let's all do it. Extrovert, line up. Let's naked. go, let's go. Right. <laughs> um, and so that was summer. And I remember very distinctly feeling, uh, and Jennifer knows me pretty well. I'm a pretty colorful character. And I was beige. Like I didn't recognize myself at all. Living in active alcoholism made me a crazy person. I used to love when I would get together at conferences and my AA buddies would be doing the, let me tell you about this one. And I'd join in and we'd all go around and then I'd say, but I was sober. And they'd go, oh, right? Like, 
I, I did all that shit. Not drunk, not high, stone cold, just crazy is what yeah. I was from living in active alcoholism. For me, it was about six months in. I remember the drive from my house to that Al-Anon meeting that I loved so much in the beginning on Wednesday nights. And I remember driving back when the weather turned cool. At the time I lived in Sugarland, when the weather turned cool and listening to Madonna's ray of sunshine with my windows rolled down with my hand out the window, kind of feeling the wind. And I went, oh, there I am. There she is. She's still in here. She's coming back. Right? Ooh. Full goosebumps. That's amazing. So, so my story of how I sold, how I sold the courage to change in a garage sale. You know, and I remember that, I remember those days. I remember those days very well. Where you know the loss of oneself is is frightening. And I think I think most people today, when they when they they kind of browse over that very quickly, and it's like, oh, I lost myself once. But you know, we're talking we're talking life or death here sometimes. You know, when you lose yourself, I know when we get patients in and we go, OK, we, we need to work the family program. <clears throat> Mom and dad jump on board and go, oh, we can't wait to tell you about little Johnny. This has got nothing to do with little Johnny. This is about you. Where in, in, the, in this whole situation have you lost you? Because addiction, love, sex, food, whatever it may be. And I love what you said. Are you, are you a religious cop? Yeah. Are you a business cop? Yeah. Because it doesn't make any difference. The symptom, the end result symptom that we're talking about is damaging everything. It's got nothing to do with it, what's going on inside my head. What's going inside my head is that I have self-sabotaging neural pathways that want to kill me on a daily basis and make it look like an accident. And, and it's it doesn't called my ego. What the look like, it's you know? called my Exactly. Right. Well, I'm addicted to sport. Well, good for you. No. At the end of the day, <laughs> what's going on? What's happened to me? Let's go back to the scene of the crime. Let's clear that shit up. Otherwise, you can't move on. And, and most people spend the rest of their life not knowing what's happening. You know, I know I did. I don't fit in on what's going on. Nobody sat me down and go, hey, Rob, do you know something? This is what's going on. And this is why you don't love yourself. And it's because you were shown never love as a kid. And it's because of this mapping of the brain is why you are today. And you realize why you keep wanting to commit suicide. And you're realizing why you keep wanting to, to relapse. And you're realizing why you keep ending up on the freaking street, Rob. Let me tell you why. And, and this is what this program is about. It's getting to that point there, Tracy, that you just spoke about. It's a, let's talk about it. There's no, look, we've seen in the 60s, 70s, and sometimes 80s what our parents did with sweeping shit underneath the carpet. We've, we're seeing the result today, and it isn't good. So what I'm saying to everybody is enough of sweeping that shit under the carpet. The carpet's full. Stop it already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get the vacuum out. Stop rushing it under the freaking carpet because we're killing people because we're sensitive people, you know? And everyone looks at me and they go, oh, look at you, Rob. You're all big and brash and loud and aggressive and follow me home. Look at the times when I can't get out of bed because I'm so depressed in the morning. Watch the times when I call Jennifer asking for help because I can't stop crying. We all go through it, but nobody wants to talk about it. And this is what this program is about. So I'm glad you brought it up. It's awesome. Tell me, tell me what love is. L-O-V-E. Define the word love. If, if somebody was going to come to even me right now and go, define that word for me, Tracy, because I don't know what it means. I never have done. So I don't. That's very interesting. I, I don't I don't know that I can define it as a as a as a definitive thing. For me, it's a feeling. Um, it's a feeling of completeness, of wholeness. It's um, as far from the feeling of shame as you can possibly get. Like it's on the opposite end of the spectrum <coughs> of shame. It's for me, it's a feeling of when I feel um, fully in alignment with the truth of who unabashedly, unapologetically Tracy. And um it's the feeling of somebody hugging you, oh, like a real hug, like that hug where you wait until they sort of melt when you're hugging them. It's um, what it feels like for those of us who are parents. It's what it feels like when your baby looks into your eyes with that surrender and that adoration. But it's not just rainbow sprinkles and fairy arts and unicorn farts like let me tell you 
when, when my clients say, what's it like to have Tracy for a coach? One of my, one of my male clients says, it's like having a functional mother, like an, un, I know she loves me unconditionally, but she will put her foot in my ass, uh, just as sure as the day is long. So it's, it's, it's honest. It's really honest. And, um, it, and I'm not afraid. I love my people so much. I'm not afraid for them to hate me. I will tell them the truth no matter what, because I love you that much. And I'm not afraid for how you, you are going to react or respond or leave me anymore, which is like, cue the angels that I'm not afraid that somebody's going to leave me if I tell them the truth, right? So it is that it is ferociously fearless, and um, multifaceted, like it's so multifaceted. If I had to name all the facets, I love the, what the Greeks did with love, right? There's agape love and like Eros love, like that is far more accurate. And honestly, Dr. Rob, what it is for you is different than what it is for me. And you have to define it for yourself. And you have to know when you are in the presence of it, when you're radiating it, when you need to receive it, how you receive it, what is it? I, I talked to a friend of mine the other day and I said, what's your husband's love language? Beautiful book by Dr. Mark Chapman about the five love languages. We're killing each other, trying to love each other in the wrong damn language. And then we're pissed off at our partners and our kids and our spouses because we're killing ourselves trying to love each other. But you know, I have a list right here of my partners. I feel loved when. We made each other a list. I feel most loved when his list is totally different than mine, right? But if we don't know that and if we don't take the time to define it for ourselves, how, how can they love us well? We have to give them a little instruction booklet that says, let me make it easy for you. Here, when I'm doing the dishes in the kitchen and you come up behind me and you rub my back just with love, oh, that hits the spot. Like, that's it. That's the shit right there. But it's going to be different for you than it is for everybody else. Yeah. Tracy, I, um, well, what I, what I want the audience to know is that I, I do know Tracy fairly well, Tracy Lee. And, um, occasionally when we're on zoom calls, she's got this really beautiful, big pink chair that is like oh. bulky. Yeah. I don't know. Can you I don't know. If it's sure. there. Hold on. Um, there, it oh, is. there it is. And, um, I, I will say to her, I just want to curl up in that chair with you and I want you to wrap like your mama love all around me. Yeah. Because one of the one of the things that um, I know in my life is that there was a misattachment in with my mom very young and I didn't understand how to be with women, which then <clears throat> has me in women's group, which when I show up on the women's group, I go, I really want, don't want to be here, but I'm forcing myself to be here. So I know how to be with women. Um, but I'm really curious, like, how do you walk somebody through re under like reattachment to the sex that they weren't the, the parent that they didn't have that full attachment to? Yeah. Tony Robbins has a thing who, which parents love did you crave the most? And I love that question. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's very telling. Um, Dr. Rob, you said something earlier that reminded me of, and Jennifer, make sure I answer your question because I'm going to back up a little bit. At some point in my searching to feel happier, to feel better, to not feel defective, having read every friggin' self-help book and tiptoed my way into every 12-step program thinking they had the answer and the harder stuff, right? <clears throat> it dawned on me as I had read, frustratingly, another book that we all had dysfunctional childhoods. Not just me, not just Jennifer, not just Dr. Rob, everybody. And all of a sudden I went, oh, it must be happening for us, not to us. Mm -hmm. It must be part of the hero's journey. It mm -hmm. must be part of the evolution of what do we forget or unlearn at around the age of four when we start to learn what the rules are, right? And how do I get back to a place of what if I just could have a temper tantrum and feel better afterward <clears throat> in an adult way, but hell yeah. Like there's so much honesty in a three-year-old and a two-year-old that they, they don't have all these rules anymore, right? So Part of it is that one of the things I tell my clients is if you ask a four year old, do they want macaroni and cheese or they want broccoli? They know the answer right off the bat. If you ask an adult, 
an adult is going to go like this. Oh, macaroni and cheese. Mm. But, you know, it's like all those carbs and gluten isn't really good for me. And it's probably got artificial and dairy, dairy, you know, and broccoli has folic acid and it's got fiber. And I heard something about broccoli and cancer. Like we muck it up with all this stuff we've learned. And so to get back in touch with your inner four-year-old like an oracle, it doesn't mean that we're going to always do what the four-year-old wants to do, but I want you to know what your yes is and what your no is. And if what your yes is, Jennifer, is like mine, there is this little four-year-old in me that just goes, I want my mommy. I want my mommy. I want my mommy. Now, I don't really... In a, in a cognitive way, I don't really want her. And she's gone, God love her. She's my greatest teacher in the whole wide world, but she wasn't gonna give me what I really wanted. So where can I be, and I just got this yesterday, you guys. My childhood taught me one thing for sure, which is to be resourceful. And yesterday, for the first time, I heard resourceful. How can I... How can I reconnect myself with source, the divine, with God, whatever you want to call it, and be really clear about what I need and unabashedly give myself permission to have it, which is what you do, Jennifer, when you say, I just want to curl up in your chair, in your arms, and have you, and it rocks, by the way, so, and have you hold me and rock me, and God damn this pandemic if I could I would love that like yes come over and and I will scoop you up and like you can hear my heartbeat and, oh, I know exactly what you want girl because me too right well, and then we'll take turns on another day and be my turn, right so it's about cutting through all the fog of all the bullshit that we've learned to just know what is our pure desire so sometimes one of the things that I teach my clients is when you wake up, notice with no judgment or criticism <clears throat> what you're feeling. What are you feeling today? No judgment, no criticism. I feel cranky. I feel lonely, whatever it is. And then what do you desire to feel? And if you can say those things out loud to someone who feels safe enough, what I love about recovery is when we come into the rooms, we find people who speak our language, who know our pain, who love us. Those people saved my life. And I felt like I had been wandering around the world speaking Swahili and I walked into a room with people who understood me and I clung to them for dear life until I could be that for myself. And that, I think that's the, that's the disconnect we have as well because if, I, if, if, if most of us was to say to our patients, like, what was your childhood? Like, oh, it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. I had a good childhood. It was, oh, we don't have much, but you know, when you go back to our childhood, anything, anything less than nurturing is child abuse as far as we're concerned. Think about that for a second, guys, when you're watching this. Anything less than nurturing is child abuse. You know, put that st stand, you stupid idiot. Well, why are you doing that again for? It makes no difference. So we all come from a place where we want to be wanted. We want to be loved. We're not too sure how to be loved. The disconnect has already happened sweeping under the carpet again come up to raise its head but most importantly a thing to find that connect later on you see most of us don't want to admit that they don't want to admit there's a defect in the family system somewhere in the core belief somewhere the disconnect that my dad never told me he loved me and this is the truth my dad would never do anything that embarrassed him if we give him a christmas present or a birthday present we have to leave it in a room and walk out until he went in and opened it now that's just the way it was. i remember saving up for asia and buying this stupid crazy big alarm clock that he didn't need but I bought it in from his birthday. And when he came in after the football match, the only thing he could speak, speak about is his local team were just lost. And I'd be sat with his big clock. Now, that devastated me. Holy shit. That did devastate me. Wow. Yeah, I did. Because I was waiting for him to come in. And um, he took no notice of me. That has probably been chasing that clock for the last 40, 50 years. This, this is what I like about this show because it's raw, it's gritty, it's truthful. You know, I, I, just, I just wish that everybody could get into a place that all three of us, I know we are, you know, that, that it's there for us. It, it's, I mean, it's people like Tracy, guys, and Jennifer, who I, I just love Jennifer, I adore her completely. 
who, who are there to help people, but are also open to, to walk down this path with you and go, yeah, you know, I know how it feels because we've been there. And I think one of the most important things is in life is that we trust these people. We trust us to walk down the path. I know we have a great saying here, and I'm trying to come off that subject because it might be too painful for live, uh, you know, show. But we have a saying here that says, says who? Yeah. You know, well, I can't have the perfect marriage. Says who? Yeah. Who are these guys that are making all these rules up? They, you know, who who's are they? they? <laughs> I mean, me and my wife had, a, had an argument four days into our marriage, and it was something and nothing. And, and, and she sat down and she said, well, come on, Rob, that's the way marriage is. And I said, says who? Right. Who's making these rules up, you know? So uh, we, we try and change that. And, and I just, I have taken something from here that's going to change my life, Tracy. And that is, I'm going to get my list downstairs. I'm going to walk downstairs and I'm going to give my a copy to my wife and a copy for me that says, I feel most love when. And you can bet by 12 o'clock today that'll be done. Mm. So thank you so much for that. That is freaking awesome. I'm going to have to leave it to you, Jennifer, to ask another question because I need to just ponder on what I just went through. <laughs> Beautiful. God, like, you know, I'm done. Done. My work here is done. That's, thank you, Dr. Rob. I, I want to say, when you tell the story about yourself and, and your dad and the clock, um, the thing that breaks my heart is that your daddy didn't know how to let himself be loved. He had no idea how to let himself be loved. And so he couldn't receive that love from you. And so many of us that are really good givers, and I'm not saying he was, but so many of us who are really good givers are also um, shit at receiving. Shit at receiving. It's, it's so vulnerable and uncomfortable. And, you know, here's the thing. The good news and the bad news are the same. I'm 100% responsible for everything that happens in my life. And that, that I remember, I remember bumping into that in recovery early on and, and, and realizing in that moment, I could no longer point my finger at the alcoholic, at my mother, at the asshole in the car in front of me. I could no longer point my finger at anyone and make them responsible for the condition of my being, which was liberating and mortifying all at the same time. So one of the pearls in my toolbox is what I call the winning relationship formula. And the winning relationship formula is finding the volume knob on taking things personally and adjusting it slowly until you can click it off. Understand why what's happening. Understand your hurt. Don't skip over that part. Because when we feel hurt, there's something to heal there, you know? There's something historic there. So eventually, you turn that volume knob all the way down until it clicks to the off position lovingly. And then you find the volume knob on compassion, and you turn that all the way to max volume. Because the truth is, generally speaking, when we are hurt by someone else's behavior, when, when my partner is doing something that, that is in his upset, that is scaring me or touching me, if I can turn to compassion and look at him and my inner dialogue can go, wow, he's really upset. He doesn't talk to me like that. Like He's really upset. I wonder what's curiosity. I wonder what's happening for him without the, the personal, because I'm responsible for how I feel, not him. That has helped me tremendously in so many relationships and like anything, the way we get good at anything is the way we get good at everything, which is practice, practice, practice. And no one likes that part. People want me to give them the, the magic pill that says, oh, here now, ding, it's all better. Now you know it intellectually, but we have to embody it over and over and over the new way of being. What are you going to say, Jennifer? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think it's really important to, I remember the first time I went into um, some of the recovery rooms and I understood that my heart had the capacity to feel angry, sad, disappointed, mad, um, loving, joy, playful, like all I had the capacity to have experience all of those. And so did, so does everybody else. But when we, when we bump up against the anger, it normally or can trigger some, some early childhood experience. But what I really want to talk to you about is, 
people talk about not taking things personally. And that it took me a long time to not take things personally, like a long time to not take things personally. I mean, Dr. Rob and I talk about that all the time. Um, and, and early on in our in our time together, I said something that really pissed him off and he was he took it really personally. He didn't talk to me for a little while. Right. And so so and I, I have experienced that in myself. And so how do you walk somebody through a practice of not taking something personally? Because this comes up a lot. For I know yeah. my own clients. Yeah. So it's an oversimplification. And like if we if we looked at don't think take anything personally under a microscope, there will be like a hundred steps in there, right? So the the first step is, and, and this is what I really believe. When we feel triggered, it's like an X marks the spot to go dig for gold right there. That's the thing. That's the place. Something's there. There is some treasure underneath there, something that wants us to be healed. So if I am affected by something that you say or do, I have trained myself and trained my clients to know, aha, thank you. Thank you. I have an owie there that I didn't realize was there. Give me a minute. I need to go and tend to me before I can be relational with you. I need to clear and heal whatever that is in me until I can be relational with you because until I do that, all I see is me and I can't see you, right? So it's not so much a quick jump to take, it, don't take anything personally. That's, that's emotional bypass, that's spiritual bypass. That's me skipping me. And let me tell you what I don't do anymore in my life. I don't skip the me part. I don't skip my feelings anymore at all because somewhere along the line, the bad news is we become the perpetrator of the crimes we were taught by our families of origin. I was the one who abandoned me because I learned it and I believed it. So I don't do that anymore. So in order to not take things personally, I got to know what my hot buttons are. I got to know what my number one trigger is. When I got into Al-Anon, um, I was a rager. Things were sailing across the room and I loved the sound of breaking glass like nobody's business. And I can say that today with zero shame, thank God. And I didn't like that behavior. It scared myself, it scared my children. It was not very attractive. And something was sailing through the air before I even knew I was angry. And I prayed and I prayed for a little gap, a little nanosecond in there where I could choose. And then I had to understand there was something formulaic there. Every time, every time I picked up something to throw it, every time the common denominator was I felt invisible. I felt like you weren't hearing me. I felt like I had to do something dramatic to get your attention. And then I had to go, okay, how do I hear me? How can I see me? How can I give me, how can I say, I, when I feel unheard, here's how I feel heard. Can you just say back to me what I'm saying to you so I know, right? That sort of thing. And I, I want to I wanna say two things. In 12 Step, my, my black belt sponsor's sponsor um, was a speak, circuit speaker. And she talked about the blessing. Have you all heard of the blessing? And she says, um, she was on a retreat and this woman, she was on a retreat and the priest said to her, um, were you a blessed child? And she said, I don't know, what does that mean? And he said, you're a blessed child if you know you could go to your parents with anything anything and you'd be loved and received and she said oh no i was not a blessed child and it's her belief that in these rooms in recovery sitting in circle that we give each other the blessing finally and when i heard the blessing i ran home and my kids were like six and two they had no idea what i was saying and i put them on my lap and i said listen to me carefully and if they were here right now they would mimic it back to me because i've said it to them a thousand a hundred thousand a million times no matter what you can come to me with anything you can come to me with any dream any desire any failure any fuck up any wish any anything and i will love you and i will receive you and if you want my help i will help you over and over and over and they have taken me to task and i do that and and for me dr rob that's love no yeah, matter what 
no matter what you do, you're not going to change the way I feel about you. I'm going to love, love you it. no matter what. I love it. Absolutely love it. Guys, we're coming towards the end. Tracy Lee, I just, uh, I'm blown away. First of all, a couple of things I've taken away. So glad you were on today. Um, just want to thank you for your time. Thank you for being you. And I know we don't get to hear this a lot. And I always try and say it. Did a bit of research on you. I want to thank you for all the hundreds of thousands of people that you helped because we don't know the ripple effect. I want to thank you for the dedication that you give to the people out there that some of you don't even know, but you're still doing all your stuff. I want to thank you for changing my life today. And I never thought that was possible. I really didn't think that was possible. And thank you. And thank you, Jennifer, for bringing that up. Yeah, what a dick I am, you know, or was. You know, this is just a, such a, a phenomenal session for me. I'm going to both send you a check in the mail because I feel as if it's one of the best sessions, cancelled wise I've ever had. And, but I'd love to speak to you all day, Tracy. We can't do that. Uh, tell, me, tell, tell everyone where they can find you. Hmm. If I could talk after that, uh, you can find me at uh, my website, which is tracylee.love. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the Tracy Lee. Um, the one thing is you got to spell Tracy with an E-Y. So there's three E's in all of that. And uh, I, I, uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can ask Dr. Rob or Jennifer where to find me. And Dr. Rob, you call me anytime. And, uh, Thank you, Tracy. Thank you so much. Tracy, Tracy Lee, I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on. I knew that you would be, um, you are, um, you're like that lotus flower. Yeah. You really are. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, you heard it today. I'm breaking through addiction. The best guest around, the reason I'm the best guest around, because we're the best right now doing what we're doing. Again, thank you, Tracy Lee. Absolutely unbelievable. Guys, stay with us one sec. We'll be right back to say bye. But for now, Tracy Lee, absolutely phenomenal guest. Thank you so much indeed. Welcome back, guys. Uh, God, tell me if I stop for this. Listen, if you don't get something out of that, me, me and Jenna are in tears. I'm just going to log off here and just cry for the rest of the day. If you didn't take something from that, don't tune in anymore. This show is not for you. This is, this is why we do this. This is why we're going to get raw. We're going to use language you don't fucking like. And when you get to the real facts, if the presenters on the show you're watching anywhere in the world starts to get emotional because the guest has said something, you know you're tuning into the right place. What do you reckon, Jen? Powerful? Yeah, it was so powerful. I mean, I guess that's the part that I love so much about our the work we're doing and who we are is that we can show up however we are. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm emotional, right? And then I Tracy Lee coming on and just sharing the truths and actually stepping into the feelings and feeling the emotion, my empathy for you and your story. And, um, and, and we can all relate to that. Like we can all relate to that thing that happened when we were young, that we didn't get the recognition or we didn't get the connection or we didn't get, we weren't seen or heard. And um, I think that's the thing is our who we are being right now is our authentic self. It's like sometimes we show up and it's just like we're emotional, we're sad, and it's okay, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that's what we've shown today. It's okay. You know, if you're going, if you're down, guys, or if you if you've relapsed, or you're feeling bad, or whatever it may be, we're not talking about alcohol and drugs. We're talking about you in, in general. If you're feeling down, if you feel you can't change things, remember, says who? So says who? We yeah. can change. Why, how about starting right now? Start right this second about changing your life around. Start right this second about changing your day around. And let's get some momentum in this. This show is there for one reason. That's to bring us all together, like Tracy just said, in love, to find out what love is, to find out how we can express to one another. And like I say, in, in 45 minutes, I don't know about you, Jim, but my life's just been changed for the better. And, you know, I feel like I should be watching this show. It was that good. Yeah. Because and 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 some of the stuff 
I've never heard before, Jen. <laughs> I I never, that yeah. list has blown me away. So let's put it under a microscope. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It's so true. You can't just say what love is with one word or a sentence. Let's yeah. get it under a microscope. Let's have a look at all the millions of different definitions of what it can be and how we can express that and build our life for the better good. Well, and how, how is it that you feel love? right? Like, how is it that your partner feels love? Because when you can get there, you can begin to have the intimacy that you so deeply want in your life. It's not just let's have sex and get connected in bed. It's like really being seen, really holding each other and who, how we want to be loved, how our partners want to be loved. That is everything. And that is not something that our families talk about. That's not something they teach you in school. No, definitely right? not. So this is just beautiful. I um I'm really blown away, and I'm so I'm I'm so happy to show up tired and you know angry and sad and and all of the things that that and and to work through it here. And I feel so much better because I was able to step into my feelings. So thank you for that. I mean, I'm just so grateful. Unbelievable, guys. You know who we are. Thank you for Sorry, breaking through. I got my dogs in the office. Breaking through addiction live every Wednesday. We're going to be talking about the stuff we talked about and much more. You can find me at robkelly.com, jenniferlovelycoaching.com, tracylee.love. Uh, don't forget to look her up. She's absolutely amazing. We are going to be here every Wednesday at 9 a.m. with different guests. If you want to know where we are, Rob Kelly on Facebook, Jennifer Lovely on Facebook. Give us a like. Give us a friend. Send some questions in if yeah. you want to ask the questions. That would be awesome for us. And then also, if you ever want to be a guest, I mean, we are booked out probably till November now. But if you do want to be a guest and you think you've got something to offer, that would be absolutely awesome because we want this show to be number one. And that's where it's going. So for me, guys, I want to say thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry about the dogs. They're just having a little argument in the background. Again, I can't stop saying the name. Thank you, Tracy Lee. And I'll leave it to you, Jennifer, to take us out. Yes, thank you. And for all of you out there, please write down a list of how you feel loved. Take that on as a practice today or this week or this weekend and ask your partner, your your brother, sister, mom, dad, and really start having that dialogue to create deeper int intimacy, not only with yourself, but with others. Thank you so much. So much love. Look forward to next week. Guys, have a fantastic week. We'll see you next week. <laughs>